Good morning. In this video, I want to work out one problem where we are going to use one of the integrated rate laws. Now, how do I know we want to use an integrated rate law? The problem says that for this reaction, a plot of 1 over the concentration of the reactant versus time gives a straight line. The integrated rate laws are equations of lines where you can tell what order the reaction is depending on which axis or which graph gives a straight line. And I'll list the integrated rate laws in just a bit. Also, in part C, they want to know concentrations at a certain time point. If that's the case, that's another really good hint that you want to be using an integrated rate law. So the integrated rate laws, there are three of them. Three ones, three of the ones. <laughs> there are three that you need to remember. So the first one is for zeroth order. And for zeroth order, it is A at some point T equals negative KT plus the initial concentration of the starter material. For first order, it is the ln of the concentration of A at a certain time point equals negative kT plus ln of A at the initial concentration. And then finally, for second order, we have 1 over a equals, not negative this time, but just kt plus 1 over a at the initial concentration. So you see that if you know k, you know the initial concentration, and you know the time, you could get the concentration of the starting material at a certain time point. Now the derivation of these uh, was uh, looked at in a separate video, earlier video. Plot of 1 over AB versus time gives a straight line. So that tells me that that gives a straight line. And you could assume that if you graph this data, where the y-axis is the concentration of A or the ln of the concentration of A, these will not give straight lines. So this tells me that this is second order. Now if it's second order, we could right away answer part A. Because this is the equation of a line, y equals mx plus b, or it's in the form of an equation of a line. That slope m equals k. So for second order, m equals k, and they told us that the slope is plus 0 0.55, so k equals that slope, 0 0.55, and the units make sense. Why do the units make sense? Because the rate law for second order equation is rate equals k times the concentration of the start of material raised to the second power. That's molarity squared. Molarity squared times molarity inverse times the seconds inverse. That will give us a rate of molarity over seconds. See how we got that? Molarity over seconds. And this is uh, molarity squared, and this is k. So k has to be these units. That's the answer for part A. Pretty simple. If it was zeroth order or first order, we would have to take negative of that, because slope equals negative k. Next is write the rate law for the reaction. That one's also easy now, because we decided that the reaction is second order. We have rate. And because they had already asked us to calculate k, or to figure out what k is, 
we could go ahead and input k into the rate law equation. 0 0.55 times the concentration. Just don't forget the reaction. They call their starting material AB. So AB squared. Um, I don't care whether you put the units or not. If you're going to put the units, make sure they're correct, but I typically don't put the units. Um, I already know what the units are. And finally, C. So C is interesting because what we can get from the integrated rate law is the concentration of AB, right, the starter material, um, at a certain time point. But they want the concentration of A and B, the products. Not a big deal. If we know the starter material concentration, we know the concentration of A and plus B at a certain time point. Let us plug in to this equation these numbers. Um, 1 over, so actually AB at some time point is the unknown. And we're using this equation right here. Equals 0 0.55 times 75 seconds plus 1 over, and it's the initial concentration of the starting material, which they said is 0 0.250 molar. 0 0.250. Okay, so I know that's molar, and this would be molar also. Okay. I think we're good. Um, let us combine terms. Let's do 0.55 times 75 first, plus 1 divided by 0.250. Okay, 45.25. 1 over this concentration at time equals 75 equals 45.25. And we take the inverse, or we cross multiply, or however you want to think about it, equals 1 divided by that answer. OK, I have 0 0.022 molar. Um, give me one second. Let me just make sure this is correct. The slope is that. Okay, so I'm good there. All right, 0 0.022. 0 0.022 molar. Now, our equation was AB goes to A plus B. So it's a one to one ratio. We started out actually with uh, 0 0.250 molar. And then we went down to 0 0.022 molar. So what that means is that. Uh, we lost, in terms of concentration, um, 0 0.228 molar. Because everything is in the same uh, mixture, it's the same volume. So the molarity is proportional to the number of moles. So if you want to think of it as actual moles of material, you can also think of it that way but it's all proportional. So if I, for instance, lose 10 molecules of AB, or if I consume 10 molecules of AB, wouldn't I gain 10 molecules of each? So if I'm losing, 
0 0.228 molar of AB, wouldn't it make sense that I am gaining that much for A and B also? So A is now 0 0.228 molar, and B is 0 0.228 molar as well at time equals 75 seconds. Because at time equals 75 seconds, this is how much starting material we have. We almost have none of it. Most of it had been consumed by 75 seconds. Those are the concentrations of A and B after 75 seconds. Um, okay. Does that sound good? Again, we are using the second uh, order integrated rate law because they told us that this plot, 1 over AB versus time, gives us a straight line and it looks somewhat like this. You have 1 over AB time and it starts at some y intercept and has a positive slope where m equals k. Okay, that's all I want to say about this problem. Uh, maybe in a, another problem, uh, we'll use the integrated rate law for the zeroth order or the first order, but this is one using the second order integrated rate law.